Lightroom is insanely powerful, but even after you know how to technically use it, there's a lot of best practices stuff that'll really help you do a better job with it. And I'm gonna go through my workflow that should work for you. It works for most people from hobbyist to advanced, but I'm gonna make two disclaimers about it. First, you're gonna have to be familiar with Lightroom Basics, just how catalogs work and how to import photos, just kind of the structure of Lightroom and what it is. Second, this tutorial is really for people that shoot a lot of photos. So if you're only gonna shoot a few photos a day, you probably don't need these techniques. And last thing before we start, I wanna thank Maston Labs for sponsoring this video. We're gonna be using their film emulation as our Lightroom presets. So the photos that I'm gonna be using are from a trip that we took to to Croatia in 2016. We went there to shoot a wedding. So the wedding is a really good representation of like high volume shooting. There's tons of stuff in there. And then we also toured around a bit. So there's photos from all over the country. It was insanely beautiful. I highly recommend going to Croatia. It was great. And I'm not gonna walk through my thought process of deciding which photos to keep. That's a different thing than the technical just management of, of marking things. <laughs> But I do need to say I have already edited these, so maybe not an ideal example because I know I've already deleted some of the worst of these. But th these are really challenging photos to decide on because everybody looks different in every shot. Like a lot of people are blinking and not everybody's ideal in each one. So the main thing is that I'm going to use the X key to flag things as rejected if they are unusable. This guy's got his eyes closed. This guy's totally blocked. So I give it an X and that means that eventually it's going to get deleted. Moving on to the next one, at a glance, Everybody's got their eyes open. Everybody's, you know, looking cool. So what I'm gonna do is give that a one. Now, what one means to me is that I'm gonna keep the photo. This doesn't mean I'm gonna use the photo. It doesn't mean it's going anywhere, but this is theoretically a usable photo. I could do something with it. And that's really everything involved in this first step is giving things X's and one. So how about a one, X, X, one, 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 one. Let me go back and X that. And so now I've got a batch of ones. Another important part of this step is not to do any color adjustments yet. That's why I've closed this panel over here. As soon as you do, you'll start generating new previews and then it has to re-render those previews to start looking at the images. All right, now let's just quickly go through and rate some photos together. I'm trying to get at least one half decent photo out of each burst of photos. And I'm pretty forgiving at this point. I don't zoom in to check focus. I'm just judging based on regular size previews. You know, could this photo be good enough? By the way, in this tutorial, I'm also assuming that you're shooting raw images. Um, all this rating stuff still works if you're not. Okay, let's pretend I went through all of the photos. I actually just pulled out some that I liked because I don't have time to go through 20,000 photos right now, but you do have time, so go through all your photos thoroughly. But here are the one stars that I picked out. Very random sampling. I just wanted a broad cross-section of the whole shoot. One thing to notice is I do have one stars that are also rejected, and this is because sometimes I change my mind. So I'm also gonna add a filter down here of photos that are unflagged, that's gonna remove it down to just the one stars that aren't also rejected. So it'll give me a clear idea what I'm looking at. Now I'm gonna go back to the series of the groomsmen walking and I'm gonna start giving out two stars. And you can define two stars however you want to, but the way that I think about it is that any two star photo might be seen by the client. So I'll be more careful about not selecting blurry images. And once again, this is mostly about culling the total number of photos. To give you a rough idea, we might typically reject about a third of the whole shoot, and then two thirds of those will get one star. And then from there, a third of those one stars might become two stars. But of course, this all depends on how you shoot and what it is you're delivering. Now that I'm done with two stars, I bet you know what's next. So anything at a three level, I'm kind of assuming the client will probably see it. This is most of the stuff I'm gonna deliver. This is when I have to make hard decisions and only choose good usable photos. Four and five stars I use a little bit differently. Four stars is used for images that I wanna highlight from the shoot and show them to the client. And five is for images that could be potential portfolio work. And this is all about rating things for the long run so that your catalog becomes easy to browse in years to come and you can pull out your best work. So that's getting things sorted. And I realize I'm not explaining every detail in this. So if there's anything I'm leaving unanswered, tweet me any questions you have. And I'm going to answer all of those questions on my podcast, which is at stallmanpodcast.com. So I'll go into all of the extra detail that went unanswered in this video in a much longer format.
And now that we know which images we're going to be using, it's time for the fun part where we actually adjust the colors and make them look beautiful and like film. And to do that, we're going to use and Mastin Labs presets are really designed to be true film emulation more than a filter. I met Kirk Mastin years ago when he was just starting the project and I was really impressed with the way that he's scanning his own film and comparing those results to his digital images and really scientifically trying to get them as similar as possible and creating a look for the images that's going to last and be timeless. This is especially nice for weddings so that it doesn't look like they're dated by the time they're printed and hanging on the wall. I'm going to hit D, go to the develop module and over here on the left You'll see all of the presets they have them for. Each camera type, I own a Canon, Fuji, and Sony camera, so I have those presets installed. Uh, there is also Nikon as well. And I'm gonna jump to the Portra Original because Kodak Portra Film's what I like to use. And you can kind of just scroll through here and, and see what some of them do. But one thing to keep in mind is that exposure and white balance has a huge impact on what's happening. So what you see in this first image looks kind of weird, right? Like it really changed it. It's critical that you actually adjust the exposure until things come into where you want them to be. I also really like Fuji Color. It looks nice. So let's check which camera this is on. I press I and this is a CR2, which is a Canon file. And I'm gonna do the neutral. And that's looking pretty good. It's a little more contrasty than I'd like. I can go to all soft. I'll raise the blacks, lower the highlights, and I can tell it's a little bit too dark. Bring up the exposure and uh, there it really brings up the colors. Once I've selected the main preset that I'm going to be using in a shoot, and it's okay to use one or two, but generally I, I like to keep them consistent, I open up the develop module and I apply it to any image. And then I press G to go back to my grid view. And at this point, make sure that you filter to only three star images. Press Command A to select all of the images and then click sync settings. Some of the variables that you're syncing are part of the preset and some of them should be unique to each image. So we're gonna uncheck white balance, exposure, local adjustments, lens correction, although this one does depend on the situation, transform, spot removal, and crop. Because all those things can vary across images. They are not necessarily the same. I'm gonna hit synchronize. And now in a few moments, when my uh, slow computer catches up, I will have a preset on all my images. And I kind of like to have a preset guide me through what needs to be done. It highlights issues. So now the fact that this image is too cool becomes much more obvious with the preset on it as before and after. So let's go back to the start and, and just do a really quick edit on these. I'm just gonna speed it up. So I try to adjust everything that's going to be affecting the colors at the same time. And that's really exposure and white balance are the biggest ones. And if I'm editing a single image, like putting a lot of attention to an editorial image, I'm going to spend a lot more time on it than you'll see here. For events, you just, I have to move more quickly than that. I can't micro adjust everything. So that's where presets really excel. Keep in mind that this is how to make huge batches of photos look great. Uh, if it is a job where one image is the focus of the project, I'd spend a lot more time tweaking the HSL, tone curves, and everything else, but that's not what we're doing today. When all the images are looking pretty good, it's helpful to go and look at them all again in the grid view and just see how they all match up together. It might strike you that you adjusted different ones very differently. So you'll notice some little tweaks and improvements that can be made. After I'm done adjusting all my colors, it's really important to go back through all of the images and check for your horizon line and making sure that everything is straight. To me, photos should only be crooked if you're doing it with a really specific intention, and, and even then usually shouldn't be crooked. It, it otherwise just looks sloppy and like the sign of an amateur photographer. And the way that you crop an image can also really create a composition that wasn't apparent in the original photos.
Another step that I'm skipping is Photoshop. So um, sometimes I'd go in and like remove, say people from the background or distracting objects or whatever. I'm just not gonna do that today. When there's some minor perspective distortion, I like to use the guided transform tool. Just be careful not to let it distort your subject. In a photo like this, I might only apply the horizontal lines so that the vertical doesn't distort. Whoops, and I want it to be centered. Let's go back. All right, our images are edited. The colors are in there. We did a bunch of Photoshopping that you didn't see, and uh, now I'm ready to export them. Here's my basic settings. I will usually put them in my Dropbox in a folder named the year, create a subfolder that is the project. This was Croatia. And then for compression, if I'm just delivering the photos to a client that I know won't edit them at all afterwards, I'll usually set the compression to about 75. If it's gonna be modified later, I will set it to 100. Um, I do work in sRGB. I eventually would like to start moving to P3, although I have had it cause issues on other people's screens. I do often resize my image based on what it's for. So uh, for wedding clients, I'll, I'll try to do it at the largest size of the cameras that I'm using, let's say those 25 megapixels, um, and I'll let it enlarge because I, I find it that I just don't want people to be confused about why some images are different sizes, and they probably won't notice the scaling up and down that is happening because of cropping, basically. So. I don't want it to be a, a weird that images are just slightly different. If it's a more sophisticated user that I know understands resolution and photography, I'll probably give them the originals and um, just don't resize them. I don't typically sharpen them at all unless I have a specific reason to. I often include all my metadata. I don't watermark them. And that's it, really super basic export settings and boom, I hit export. So that actual time to do the recording of this was like, two hours, but to actually edit that wedding took like two full days. It, it takes a lot of time. I don't, I don't have a faster way, but this isn't the most precise way of making sure that you get all of the best images that you have and that you edit them all correctly. There are so many more details about this, but I just wanted to go through it as fast as I could. Oh, and I forgot one last final, final step. When you've delivered the photos to the clients, you've backed up everything and you know that you're done with the shoot, you can finally delete your rejected photos.